everyone. It's really cool to be here. So first thing, put your hands up if you've ever taken a leap of faith and it didn't work out. Oh, cool. That's about 50%. So we've got some risk takers in the audience. This is really good. And I think you'll be able to empathize with me. And for those that haven't put their hands up, you will be doing that in probably a couple of years' time. <laughs> so I should be able to teach you something. So when it happened with me, I created some principles that I lived by then, and I still live by now. <coughs> but first, let me talk to you about getting stuck in Amsterdam. So taking you back to 2006, I was 27 years old, I had an English degree, and I had seven years' experience in mental health care work. It was a super challenging job, very frustrating at times, really, really fulfilling. But after a couple of personal losses, like my best friend, my grandparent, I really needed time for myself. I couldn't give, and I couldn't look after other people anymore. I got an opportunity to move to Amsterdam. Had some friends there, they said, come over, you can change your life. There can be something really different here. I thought, cool, that sounds good. Went over, and I think I thought, I didn't really have a plan. So I think I thought I'd get there, and there'd be all these opportunities everywhere, and then I'd just pick one up <laughs> and run with it. So I was very optimistic. Um, it didn't quite work out like that. And I also didn't have much savings. So I was broke, and I was in Amsterdam, and I was wondering what my options were. I took matters into my own hands because rent, and um, put an advert out, and I wrote what I was good at, what I thought I was capable of doing, and yes, I could do care work. The next day, I got a phone call from Delphine, um, who asked me if I'd be interested in being a nanny. So that's not what I'd come to Amsterdam for. <laughs> But, <laughs> as you now know, Delphine is awesome. Yeah. Her kids are super awesome as well. <laughs> she had a really cute baby, Philo, and I was like, okay, I think I can, I can at least give it a go. So I became a nanny after saying I was not doing care work ever again. And at first, it was going really well. So the baby was doing well. This is always a good thing. <laughs> um, it was really fun to watch her grow. Um, I started making homemade baby food and getting really into it, reading mummy blogs. Um, but there was something that wasn't really connecting. I was still a bit frustrated. It was like, I knew I should be doing something else, but I was kind of settling for something that I kind of knew. And I wasn't sure what the next step needed to be. Delphine would come home from work and talk about her exciting projects, all of these things that she was working on, these complex problems she was solving, and I was like, wow, I want to do that. <laughs> e-commerce sounds awesome. <laughs> but there was e-commerce, an opportunity, and then there was where I was, and I was a nanny at home, spending a lot of time in the living room, waiting for the baby to wake up. So I wasn't quite sure how I, I was going to get from there, uh, well, from there to there. So I started getting curious. Has anyone read The, um, the Artist's Way by Julia Cameron? Yeah. Anyone? Oh, a couple of people. This is good. So I felt like I needed to do something creative and shake myself out of this environment a little bit that I, I'd put myself in. And one of the exercises in the book is to do morning pages. So you write for three... Three pages, aha, three pages every day. And you write down all of your thoughts, your feelings, no interruption. And through this practice that I was doing every day, I could see what I was good at, what I was scared of, what I would want to be doing, and I started really understanding myself. I realized that I was quite into writing at this point. I was doing it every day. I wanted to do more of that. Um, I also realized that I was quite scared that if I did something like that and something completely different from what I was used to, that people would think I was shit at it. So that kind of put me off even trying. 
And then I thought, I have to get over this. So I signed up for a creative writing workshop. Went to this creative writing workshop. Delphine, as usual, starts spotting talents. <laughs> and she says, Do you, what, have you ever thought about copywriting? So this is 14 years ago, and I was like, I don't know what copywriting is. <laughs> she said, well, you can write and get paid for it by businesses. It's like, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so ironic now. So I, the next week, I signed myself up for a copywriting course, and I met my first client in that workshop. She needed somebody to write copy for her website. So I said, yep, yeah, I can do it, I think. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> a few months later, I'm still nannying full time, I'm still taking writing workshops, and I'm also doing client work. So I'm getting further, I'm doing a little bit more, I'm, I'm extending my comfort zone. It's not going quickly enough, and I've got this really full, exciting life that I was hoping for, but I can't fit everything in. So I chat with Delphine say, look, I really want to do more writing work, but I also still want, I, I feel responsible, I want to stay with the family, and Delphine was like, would love to keep you. <laughs> Let's work out a deal. <laughs> so the deal was that Philo would go to preschool, and when she went to preschool, I would be taking on more hours of client work, and it was a win-win for both of us. Well, all of us, also Philo. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, Quite soon after that, Philo does go to preschool. I, um, I take on more client work, and then I, need to, I, I realize that I need to start thinking about what my version of success will be. What's the next step for me? My version of success at the time was just simply, can I get paid to write full time? That was it. It didn't matter how much I got paid, to be honest, just that I could get paid for writing. And as soon as I realized that, opportunities started showing themselves. And the first one that I saw was for Booking.com, for a content editor. It was a very small travel company at the time when I applied for it. It's got a bit bigger now. <laughs> and I got the job. And I felt really, really accomplished. It was like, this is my big win. I've, spent, I've worked hard for this. And I thought about my definition of success, writing full-time, being paid for it, and I was in an office. I'd never thought I would be in an office. I was in this office, trying to work out how to use a Word document, staring outside at rooftops of Amsterdam, and I just thought, I've made it. This is it now. <laughs> of course. Twelve years later, I'm still at Booking.com. <laughs> I'm not still a content editor. <laughs> Um, I've done many roles since then. I've changed my jobs probably too much. Um, I've done everything from leading content teams in Amsterdam. I've set up new tracks where we solve content problems for the company. We provide content solutions, translations in 43 languages, creative writing, um, visual content like video for the whole of the company and whatever they need. I've, lead, I've led teams of up to 250 people globally. I did not think this would happen when I opened up the morning pages <laughs> or applied for a job as a content editor. Um, I continue to feel extremely grateful for the opportunities that I have. And these days, um, as you heard, I look for ways to pay it forward with events like Be Equal and sharing my story. But enough about me. I know you want something out of this as well. So I've got three things that I'd love for you to take away. Things that you can take with you now, start practicing straight away, and hopefully see some of the changes that I felt for me. So the first is, start getting to really know yourself. If you haven't taken that time yet, please do. You will never regret it. It could be through journaling, like I did. It could be therapy, like I've done. <laughs> It could be coaching, like I've always done. <laughs> it could just be feedback from very honest, supportive friends, whatever that looks like for you. But there are ways to finding out what you really desire, what you can contribute, and what's holding you back. And I encourage you to do that. Once you've done that, define what success looks like for you. 
So not your, pe your parents, your family, your friends, your peers. What does your day look like? What's going to give you joy and energy and make you feel like you want to come to work every day? It could be owning your own business. It could be leading teams. It could be making art for a living. It doesn't matter what it is. It's got to be yours. And once you've defined that for yourself, just take one next step. It doesn't have to be a big leap. You don't have to risk everything for your dream. You can take one practical step at a time. Because it's not about the huge success stories that we hear, which are very well edited, by the way. It's about progress, not perfection. Thank you. Thank you.